never did. I never once predicted two million. One million, yes. Hey, what is up, guys? A few days ago, I made a video about John McAfee two million dollars Bitcoin price prediction by the end of 2020. Recently, he had another interview explaining math behind his prediction. In this video, we will go over John McAfee's math and also we will have a quick recap of the recent Max Kaiser interview. Firstly, let's take a look at the current Bitcoin market. Current price of the Bitcoin is around $9,300, with pretty low volatility for the past week. Market seems to be kind of boring right now, but when volatility is low, this is the time when we might witness some decent spikes in Bitcoin price, either downside or upside. 10 days ago, Bitcoin had a major spike after dropping from $8,000 to $7,500. From that price point, Bitcoin surged within one day by adding a $3,000 making 40% gains. This was the third largest Bitcoin spike in the terms of percentage since the beginning of Bitcoin creation. Now let's take a look at John McAfee and what he had to say about his two million dollars Bitcoin price prediction. Never did. I never once predicted two million. One million, yes. The press gets carried away with jokes and what have you that I make, but no. One so that was a joke when you had said two million. I didn't say. Never. I never said. Two I think yeah. So you, no. I, on a different stream, it, it maybe you misspoke possibly, but. Okay, let's get back to a million, right? Anyway, I said I would be surprised if it didn't hit two million. I didn't predict it. I didn't public, publicly say it. Anyways. Wait, did he just claim that he did not say two million dollars? Let's roll it back. For God's sake, people, go back to 10th grade mathematics when you first learned things like algebra and run the fucking numbers. If it's less than $2 million by the end of 2020, then mathematics itself is a flawed discipline. Not only he said that Bitcoin will reach $2 million by the end of 2020, but he also said that if that does not happen, mathematics is a flaw. Okay, okay, I guess we can forgive him that $2 million price prediction. He probably said that out of his emotions, not really thinking about what he exactly was saying. But $1 million is still on the table. Otherwise, we'll witness dickening on national television. Anyways, a few people have been paying attention to the fundamental statistics of the coin itself. I mean, only 21 um, million will ever be mined. 18 million have already been mined. Those three million that will be mined will take 10 years or more to finish. And we have already lost seven million. Mm, that's um, right. And ev every day, three to four times as many Bitcoins are lost as are mined. Now, I'm a mathematician. <laughs> I, see, I see a commodity which is um, growing in acceptance. I'm talking about as a method of payment or a store of value. Um, and a supply that's approaching zero, or eventually will, uh, when the last person has forgotten their password. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, or, <laughs> lost, or lost their phone and forgot to write down their keys or, or something. Yeah. I'm just a mathematician, and I figure out that the rest of the world will figure this out probably by Christmas of this year. <laughs> Let's take a look at his genius math behind his $1 million Bitcoin price prediction. Well, his math is not secretive at all. He claims that 21 million Bitcoin will ever be mined, which is true. 3 million Bitcoin is still to go. Wait, did he just say that 3 million Bitcoin to be mined will take 10 years or more? Well, definitely it will take more than 10 years, John. Last Bitcoin will ever be mined is in 2140, so actually 120 years to go. Also he claimed that 7 million Bitcoins have been lost forever, and more and more are being lost every day. Not too sure if that's true. It's hard to verify how many Bitcoins exactly have been lost forever. Many resources claim that approximately 5 million. 
Assuming that 5 million Bitcoin are gone, that means close to 40% of Bitcoin have been lost. It's quite a lot. Therefore, we currently have 13 million Bitcoin in circulation. Supply is indeed deflationary. If Bitcoin survives, I'm not going to be surprised if, in 100 years, we will have only 5 million Bitcoins in circulation. The most important about this is that John McAfee figured it out that the rest of the world will figure it out by the end of this year. That means that Bitcoin will start to increase from December 2019 and going to go all the way to $1 million next year. Therefore, Bitcoin will have to increase by $2,700 on average every day for 365 days straight starting from January 1st, 2020. Well, here is my opinion on that. Market is discounted mechanism. It values the price of the current asset by discounting backwards from the future events. I'm not saying that market is very efficient, but I believe that that math could be already priced into the market. It would be a different story if there would be no internet and people would live under rocks or in caves. Then yes, we would have a high chance that this math isn't priced into the market. Next question was, considering the fact that Bitcoin is very volatile, how are we going to adopt this damn thing? We need to get in because it's our only salvation financially. I mean, financial systems and controls are just getting worse in the world. The people that control your fiat currency control your whole life. I mean, you can't buy bread to send your kids to school or go to a doctor without that fiat currency. And if they choose to to increase the supply, therefore devaluing all of your hard work, then they may do so. I mean, if you want to live in that environment, you don't need crypto. If you'd like to free yourself, then get into crypto. But for God's sake, avoid this nonsense of buying and selling crypto for profit. I mean, it's like you're th like a three-year-old boy that's found your father's condom, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you don't know what it is or what to do with it, but it makes great balloons, all right? Well, as you get older, you don't understand the purpose of that condom was not to make balloons. And that's what we're doing here and now. I'm not saying stop, you're not gonna get people to stop trying to get rich. Do your thing. But for God's sake, understand, you are buying and selling gems of immense value. If not today, then tomorrow. If not right. tomorrow, then next year. And, and those gems only have value if you use them in trade for goods and services. Very true, very true. That was their intent. Please God, we've got to get back to that. I'm not saying abandon, you know, um, trading for a living. I mean, do what you will. You're not helping us any by doing that yeah. though. Yeah. You would help us by buying a house with your crypto or a car. So this is a system again, and as I started this off by saying, you got a choice if you don't mind being in that system. Uh, some people like slavery. I mean, I think, <laughs> you know, at least from a sexual stance, from a sexual standpoint, um, but I don't. Um, and, um, you know, I, I've, I'm not going to willingly accept what's coming down the pike in terms of more bars in our cages. No, right. we have to take what we now own, which is the blockchain and cryptocurrency. It did not come from the government or from Apple or Samsung or IBM. It came from the people, from the people. The first world-changing technology in a hundred years to come from the people. It's ours, people. It belongs to us and it's open fucking source. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of it. John actually has some good points. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is an alternative to our current financial system. Our current financial system slaved lower and middle class people. They have 9 to 5 jobs, they receive their paychecks, 40% of their money goes to government right away in form of taxes, and most importantly, those people can never get ahead, no matter how hard they work. This system reminds me of the hamster running in the spinning wheel and has no beginning nor end. The only way to escape is to find an alternative. 
In our case, the alternative is a cryptocurrencies. I also agree with John that buying and selling crypto is not that beneficial. Trust me, if you would buy a Bitcoin and 10 years ago, do nothing but hold, I guarantee you, you would outperform any what so called expert traders and any hedge fund managers out there. Guarantee. The full John McAfee interview was conducted by CryptoTone YouTube channel. If you want to see a full video, I will leave a link in the description box below. Now let's take a look at very entertaining interview with Max Kaiser who talks about China, Bitcoin and gold. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. I'm disguised right now. This is my costume. is the, the repo market. Oh, re oh. I wanted to go out as something truly frightening. So I've dressed up like the repo market. It's scaring everyone well, around the world out of their wits, Daniela. That should be story number one. Whatever it is you have on that paper, forget it. No, no. You're going to like it. It's a treat for you. Okay, trick or treat. Me. Treat. Okay, so I crunched some numbers. Yep. If you had put 10000 bucks in gold five years ago, you would have close to $12,500 today. If you had put the same amount in Bitcoin, you would have... $270,000. That's right. Now, you might, now, everyone if knows. If you were following the Kaiser report, we told you to buy it at a dollar right. in 2011, and you'd be a multimillionaire. You'd be retired on an island somewhere laughing your butt off. But my question for you is this, because everyone knows you as the ultimate Bitcoin guy, but you are still in precious metal, so still make the case for gold and silver here. Despite yeah. those numbers. Well, like I said, you know, the repo market is flashing financial catastrophe. And the reason it's flashing this and telling, you know, markets are discounting mechanisms. They tend to be price sensitive to events that are not necessarily seen or known until they actually happen. And what's happening is that China is getting ready to open the trap door on the U.S. dollar. Here's what I'm hearing, Daniela. China is about to announce that they, in fact, have not just under 2,000 tons of gold, but closer to 20,000 tons of gold on a very aggressive move to put the final nail into the U.S. dollar. What's your source for that? As you know, uh, we do our show that's broadcast globally, and we have a lot of contacts all over Asia and in Eurasia and uh, naturally in Russia. And the feeling is that this is the time for China to now step out and put to rest this idea of censoring their global trade right. with the U.S. censoring SWIFT and other things that they do to curtail China and other countries because China's making their big move, the big move for the 21st century. They're going to pull the trap door. And let me just add that they're also, as has been reported by the media, rolling out a cryptocurrency. Uh, a lot of the details have not been divulged. I can tell you that that cryptocurrency China's rolling out will be backed by gold. It's a two... Uh, Two-prong announcement. Number one, okay. China's got 20,000 tons of gold. Number two, we're rolling out a crypto coin backed by gold, and the dollar is toast. The dollar's going, like every other paper money in history, to zero. And you say, where's gold going? Is it going to 5,000, right. to 10,000? It doesn't matter. In, in dollar terms, gold is going to infinity. In dollar terms, Bitcoin is going to infinity because the dollar is going to zero, like every piece of garbage fiat money before it. The problem is that people don't equate Bitcoin with money the same way that they equate gold with money. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's false. Bitcoin is as much money. As a matter of fact, let me explain why Bitcoin is a superior form of money than gold. Okay, I'll do that right now. Both fiat money and gold are inferior to Bitcoin for one very simple reason, that with a Bitcoin transaction, it is also simultaneously the settlement. You don't have that with fiat, you don't have that with gold. If I do a transaction in gold, the gold has to be verified. If I do that in fiat, that fiat has a verification level, and we see that in the repo market, because banks don't trust each other, repo rates are skyrocketing, because you have to settle these trades. Unless, it, until a trade is settled, it doesn't really count. With Bitcoin, when you do a Bitcoin transaction, the, the transaction is the settlement. It is the settlement. That's what makes it better money than gold or fiat. It's just as scarce, it's just as uh, divisible, it's just as portable, it's just as desirable, except it has a built-in settlement layer. It's just part of the transaction. That's what these freaking guys don't understand. Like, um, you know, Peter Schiff, he's completely clueless when it comes, because he's never spent even five minutes looking at it. He just mouths the same thing over and over and over again. He's an uninformed imbecile. I gotta get he's an imbecile. You. I gotta get you both. Imbecile. 
feel better now? Yes. You're okay? I feel much better. All I'm right. getting, I saw a kid down the lobby with a bag of candy. <laughs> and you stole and it. I, I, I jammed him on the head, and I got a bag, a whole sack full of great okay. candy. Last time you were on, Fantastic. you saw Bitcoin go to 100,000. Um, yes. But you're more passionate, I feel, this time. So are you really willing to double down or move that forecast even higher? I think it's just a matter of timing. So the forecast is still 100,000 plus. But, you know, let's be honest. In dollar terms, it's infinity, right? I mean, it could go to 5 million, 10 million against the dollar. Uh, just like gold is making new all-time highs against mm -hmm. currencies all over the world right now, it's, yeah. you know, people don't report the fact that gold's made a new all-time high against the euro, right. against the pound, against the Indian rupee, against the South African right. rand, against the Russian uh, ruble, right? It's made new all-time highs against the all these currencies though, you know, right now. This 